Hi guys, Wilbervast here. As you may or may not know, last weekend was the 24th Ludum Dare 48 hour game development competition. The theme this time was evolution and I participated with a bunch of friends at a friend's house. Although of course the rules do stipulate that entrances must be individual, so in fact we all worked on individual projects. That said, I think everyone involved benefited greatly from having like-minded individuals around to bounce ideas off and to test their games on. So anyone thinking of participating in the Ludum Da or a similar competition, I'd very much recommend finding someone to participate with in person, even if you're not working on the same project. This is the first jam I've participated in where I had to make all the art assets myself, and so I did slightly miscalculate the amount of time required and ended up with something uh, rather basic looking, although the programming side of things was more or less finished. So I do need to uh, factor in the the added uh, uh, cost of creating all the art assets yourself. The way the competition works is that uh, all entrances are rated by the participants during the subsequent three week period. You're encouraged to rate other people's work uh, because the more projects you rate the more easily other people will find your project in the list. This week, however, I haven't been able to really look at anyone else's games at all, nor have I been able to fix any of the bugs in my own game, something you are allowed to do a posteriori. This is because I've been a volunteer at the 20th European Conference for Artificial Intelligence, or ECAI, which is held every two years in a different European city. Uh, this year it was held in Montpellier in the south of France and I think things went reasonably smoothly. Uh, we also presented a paper uh, at one of the workshops, so not at the main conference but still great honour and uh, it seems to have gone down uh, fairly well as well so we're quite proud of ourselves. Uh, this year also marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of Alan Turing, the man who is essentially the father of the concepts behind what is now computer science and artificial intelligence, the Turing machine, the Turing test, very, very influential mathematician, and of course has quite an unfortunate story, uh, having helped the Allies crack the Enigma code during the Second World War. He was of course charged with uh, gross indecency for being a homosexual, and uh, chemically castrated, uh, after which point he uh, killed himself apparently by eating a poisoned apple. And this may be one of the reasons why I, an apple with a bite taken out of it is the symbol of um, apple computing. But that may just be uh, a rumour. Anyway, the conference was truly fascinating but also quite exhausting since we weren't there to just to enjoy ourselves we were working. Um, I'm glad I did go though, but I'm also glad that it's uh, over now and I can relax and play some interesting games. What you should be looking at here, with any luck, is a screen capture of the entire 48 hour period, uh, with the exception of uh, those times when I was eating or asleep, when I turned off my computer. There was actually a short period as well of maybe an hour or two when I didn't have the screen capture on. Uh, unfortunately I turned it off and forgot to reactivate it. And sadly, that was the period when I was doing my very basic sprites and choosing the color scheme for my game. Which uh, is sad because I think it would have made for well, quite an interesting segment, but uh, never mind. So, uh, essentially, what's used is a little program run in the command line called Scrot, which takes a nice tear free image of uh, whatever's on the screen. I can hook this up with a bash script in order to take an image every 10 seconds and then. Uh, these images can be compiled into a film using FFmpeg. I'll provide uh, the scripts, or at least links to the scripts, uh, so you can uh, use it for your own screen capturing in future. I may also add some Gorse visualizations to this video. Uh, Gorse is uh, a little tool that enables you to display graphically work being done on a piece of version control software. So for instance, I'm a big fan of Git uh, I've actually got my source code hosted on GitHub and uh, I uh, launched Gorse on the Git uh, hidden directory uh, in order to create this little video montage of uh, file changes and so on. 
Since I'm based in Europe, we didn't actually get the theme for the competition until 3 a.m. Saturday morning. So immediately after hearing it, I went to bed and slept on uh, the idea. Which was probably a good thing, actually, because my initial two ideas weren't much cop, and I knew it. Uh, they were, on the one hand, to make a platformer game where killing enemies would make the enemies stronger the next time round. So, for instance, jumping on an enemy would mean next time they would have spikes, so you wouldn't be able to jump on them. And likewise, if you were killed, you would gain some ability pre to prevent you from dying in that way. Of course, this has a lot of problems uh, with regards to making all the uh, alternative artwork and uh, logic for enemies and the player as they gain new abilities. A much simpler way would be to do evolution based on stats, so an RPG sort of system. My second idea was to have you try and find a mate with good genes. I was thinking it might work something like uh, how players search for good loot, but again, uh, this seemed like a lot of work for something that wasn't particularly inspired. In the end, I actually went back to an idea that I'd had for my first ever jam, which was the Global Game Jam in 2011, where the theme was Extinction. My idea, which actually didn't come to me till after the jam, but I always thought it was a good idea to have worked on for the jam in retrospect was to have a bunch of cells or bacteria which the player would need to exterminate, hence extinction. And of course uh, you would use various chemicals to do so and the bacteria would develop a resistance to these chemicals simply based on the fact that they would mutate as they reproduced and that uh, those that survived would invariably be those with the highest resistances, and obviously the player would lose if they became overcome with uh, bacteria immune to their attacks. Since this is the Ludum Dare though, and since the joke category of the Ludum Dare is always 1,000 kittens, I decided that kittens would be a more interesting choice of non-player character than bacteria. I wanted to have some cute little kitten animations with overlaid colours of course, as it turned out, um, overlaying colors on sprites is a bit of a pain in uh, HTML5, and I just didn't have enough time to do any animation. So I decided to use my uh, weaknesses as a strength and actually keep to the debug style that I'd been using, which had a lot of squares and procedurally generated geometric shapes. Uh, and I, I decided to embrace this art style, add a bit more color. Uh, and I think what I've ended up with is actually something reasonably easy on the eye. Of course the gameplay is, is pretty basic really, it's just a sandbox game where a counter tells you how many cats there are, how many cats you've killed and how much taken, time you've taken. And of course you can choose your objective yourself, you can try and not kill the cats or breed stronger cats. I do want to add another indicator to the uh, heads up display that will tell you the fitness of the best cat you've produced so far and uh, perhaps at some point some kind of leaderboard that will save the results so that you can compete on time taken to kill all the cats for instance or uh, if you prefer time taken to breed a cat that is immune or uh, breeding a cat that is immune while killing the least number of cats in the process or something the idea being you choose your objective uh, obviously the the main problem with the game is I focused far too much on the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, which is very important since if, if this base layer isn't fun, then uh, you might as well stop there and not bother with the rest of the game. But you do need to build something on top of that. Um, in a sense, the, uh, the low-level gameplay is the tool that you use to accomplish an objective that will be much more higher level and require planning and long-term uh, effort. And if the base mechanics aren't fun, then following and executing that plan will not be enjoyable. But if there's no plan to execute, if there's no high level objective, then the game will get old pretty quickly. I also didn't have much time to add any music, uh, especially since my inbuilt microphone has uh, broken very recently, resulting in a sort of high-pitched whine. So I was able to record one sound effect for the cats and another one I generated from Audacity uh, just by creating noise 
and that was the effect used for the flamethrower. But I would like to add some more sound effects to the game because at the moment it is pretty uh, barren uh, from an audio point of view. Anyway, that's all for now. Um, hope you enjoyed the screencast, the gorse and everything, uh, as well as a little discussion of the game. I'll write a blog post, I think, detailing some of the more interesting and technical uh, challenges encountered along the way. But I think uh, this is about as deep as I want to go in uh, this format. Thanks very much for listening. Uh, let me know if you've participated in the D.A.R.E. as well. I'd love to play your games. And uh, do give my game a try if you have a moment. I'd really like to hear your feedback on it. All right. Bye for now.